Imagine living out of a bag for the last five years. That's what Nick Gepper did. Not because he was homeless, just because he's a simple guy. It's been a long week, but the day is finally here. Grand Junction and Futa Monument finally meet at Stoker Stadium for the Battle of the Western Slope. So we decided to play it safe and turn around. However, it's September now. We think that the snow is all melted away, so we wanted to try it again. So here's where we're going to go. About a two and a half hour drive to Marble, Colorado, so we can hike. Crystal Mill, let's go hiking. He was able to replace his drug addiction with his faith in God and an addiction of jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. He even talked me into doing it. Well, no Joe Flacco, no problem. But for Brandon Allen, he gets his first career start and his first career win as the Denver Broncos starting quarterback as the Broncos defeat the Cleveland Browns 24-19 here at home. But the biggest storyline was obviously Allen. He threw the ball 20 times, completed 12 passes for 193 yards and two touchdowns. What is the feeling like to finally bring back a gold medal to your hometown? Dude, it's gold, baby! It's gold! Baseball doesn't matter anymore just because I'm getting mauled by kids. I don't even know who these are. Where are your parents? All right. That's mine. Help me! I know you've almost thrown a couple of no-hitters this season, so I thought it'd be fun if we test the average person and see how hard it is to hit against you. You in? Absolutely. Are you a Denver Broncos fan by any oh, chance? absolutely not. Oh, wow, she was offended. Okay. We all have to start somewhere, right? For most of our local baseball players, they start at Grand Mesa Little League. They just ended their season, but before next March, they're trying to improve one of their fields to keep the players safer and the game more fun. Well, you know what? 2007 was the last time Central beat Palisade, but... For the last nine seasons, the War Dog Cup has been with the Bulldogs. But tonight, Palisade was without All-State QB Cam Tucker. A little banged up, and he's playing coach tonight, and it didn't seem to slow the Bulldogs down. First quarter, Caden Sparks light up the scoreboard with a one-yard touchdown run. Bulldogs strike first, 7-0. Second quarter now, Palisade sticking to what they know. Let Sparks run the ball, but he loses it this time. Luke Pleasant picks it up and gives the Warrior fans a pleasant surprise. See what I did there? How about a touchdown? 53 yards to the promised land, and this baby is tied. Central so happy that they're just knocking their own teammates over, but Palisade would respond. First play of the next drive. Franklin barks, breaks a couple of tackles, and he go. Just like my dating life, Mike, Franklin is all alone. Oh, except no. he scores in the end. 80 oh, yards, no, 4 6, and that's Shut all up. Palisade would get because they missed the extra point. Bulldogs up 13 to 7. Okay, 20 seconds left before the half. Central uh, has a long way to go to score. Good pass, but the ball bounces off some uh -oh. hands into the hands of the enemy. Jace Bush takes it all the way back for the pick six. Final score at Stoker, 34-7. The War Dog Cup stays with Palisade for a decade now, and Central falls to 0-4 on the season. I'm not sure if you remember, only a few years ago, back when you were playing at Wisconsin, <laughs> your senior year, you came to Colorado, and the Badgers lost to the Buffs 55-7. to I don't remember that. You don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me otherwise. <laughs> do you remember that game at all, though? I do, I do. do. I remember Ralphie running right past me. Yeah, 19-10. and 10. Yeah, it was their best season the last three years. I love you too, Mom. Oh, I, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Oh, hey, uh, I was just talking about the CMU men's basketball team and how in the last two seasons, they were in a pretty big lull, and to be honest, things really didn't look good for the foreseeable future. But then they hired head coach Mike DeGeorge, who quite literally opened the doors for the program. So I thought it'd be fun to compare the stats when the Mavs didn't have coach DeGeorge in this past season when they did. Look, 2019 wasn't the greatest season ever. A few batters later, Caleb Farmer is up, and you know the jingle. You can always hit dingers at farmersonly.bom. What did you want to be when you were 11 years old? Most people want to be something great when they grow up, but Jed Klager is already great. Earlier this month in Castaic Lake, California, in the 10 to 11 age group, Jed became a world champion Spartan racer. It feels great. I worked really hard to achieve it. 
and it just feels good to have that title as a world champion. It's surreal. The best way I can describe it is when you see people win like Super Bowls or major competitions, you only can imagine what that feels like. All I could think was, I've got a world champion. Jed started running in Spartan races about three years ago because, well, his parents started doing it. My mom and dad just asked me if I wanted to go to one of them. Ever since my first race, I've always just loved them. Being world champion at 11 years old is unheard of, but Jed trains almost every day. Go, go, go. Three days a week, he works out with his dad at Ridgeline Fitness. Then two days a week, he runs four to five miles. Then at Legacy Academy, he does ninja training twice a week. You don't have to push him. It's, it's pretty amazing to have a kid with that drive. So when I come home from work every night, it's like, okay, Dad, you know, when are we going to the gym? We keep thinking maybe he needs a new group of coaches to run with because my husband and I can't keep up with them. So. <laughs> what do you think the hardest part about a Spartan race is? I'd say the running yeah. the hardest. But that's your favorite part. Yeah. I think about, like, whatever competition I'm doing next, like the motivation to move forward, that's what I think about. Most 11-year-olds growing up want to become a ninja, but Jed can actually call himself one. And he's pretty good at it, too. I'm probably going to start going to ninja competitions, and then next year I might do another Spartan World Championship. Ten of those wide receivers have only been in the league three years or less, so obviously very young. Emmanuel Sanders, he's been in the league nine years. Veteran. He's the most experienced wide receiver, but he's not 100% just yet because of his, an Achilles injury that took him out of the 2018 season, but we have an update on his progress. Four games left in the 2018 season. Broncos star wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders tore his Achilles during practice and was out for the rest of the year. Fast forward seven months later, and he is running routes and with no pain and feeling good and cutting and feeling like myself. On the first day of training camp, Sanders looked good, running sharp routes and looking like he never skipped a beat, which he says is a testament to his hard work. I've always believed in myself. I know a lot of people always set a timetable on Achilles for a normal person, but I never look at myself like I'm normal. Um, as humble as I could say that. Hey. Even with the season-ending injury, Sanders was able to stay positive through the recovery process. I've been through so much, so so much adversity just from my upbringing that not too much can really get me down. I'll let the days stack up, and then eventually you, you'll see. You know, seven months later, here I am standing in front of you guys, and I'm full, and, and that's kind of how I attack the whole process. Going into his 10th season, Sanders has been a two-time Pro Bowler, a Super Bowl champion, and he was the Broncos' best receiver a year ago. Bottom line is, Sanders is a competitor, and he can't stay down for long. At the end of the day, you know, when the, when the, when the, when the injury occurred, I never said, oh, uh, poor me. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't look back and say, oh, why me or why this? You know, what, what good is that going to do me? It's a slow but short process. He's out here working early practice with guys. They take him in and do some more cardio with him That's where he doesn't have to pound on the ground. But everything's good so far with him. He's where we expected him to be and even a little bit more. Head coach Vic Fangio said he's still going to ease Sanders back into camp, but one thing is for sure, Sanders is ready to ball in 2019. Why live in Grand Junction if you don't get out and hike and bike and do all those fun things? In western Colorado, there's plenty to do outdoors year-round. But for some, they can't get in on the action without some help. You say hi. This is Lexi Bingham. She has a form of muscular dystrophy. Doctors aren't sure what type because they've yet to find any genetic markers that match what she has. But it didn't stop her from skiing for the very first time. Are you a little nervous? Yeah. Get it tight enough for you to feel secure. But we don't want to, you? to make it possible, Sarah and Emily put her in a bi ski to guide her down the mountain, and Lexi, she did all the turning. Mom, how you feeling? I'm excited for her. Yeah? yeah? Not nervous at all? No. I feel like you're probably a daredevil, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, nothing. Lexi said she had the time of her life <laughs> and was able to share the moment with her classmates. Violet. See you later, alligators. How exciting is it to go skiing with some of your classmates? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that guy is a good skier, too. That's exactly what you're doing. She's 
a great skier. She's really enthusiastic about it, and it makes a huge difference when you're trying something new, which today's her first day. Yeah, girl. To be able to have her ski and do the same kind of activities that her classmates are doing makes it really special. Piece of cake, right? Yep. Awesome. Can we do it again? Yep. All right. That's awesome just to have her be able to have more independence and do something that normal kids get to go and do on a daily basis if they want to. For her to get out there and just be able to do it is fantastic and yeah. heartwarming, really. Despite her condition, Lexi is always finding ways to stay active. Yeah! yeah. She does everything from showing goats and riding horses and all sorts of fun things. And now skiing. Over the years, CDA has impacted many clients, so much so that some become volunteers. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a blast because I know what they're going through in a way. DJ Dickey has cone rod dystrophy, which causes vision loss and becomes more severe over time. But he's been volunteering with CDA for over 20 years. I wasn't allowed to do football or any of the team sports at school, so CDA was, became my sport. And just when I saw what the instructors were doing all the time, I just wanted to do it because I just felt it was a great experience. An experience he gets to share with people like Lexi to help them discover an ability they never thought they could have. If she doesn't let anything slow her down or stop her or get yeah. in her way. She doesn't know, you don't know you have a disability, do you? It's not a disability. It's just your ability, huh? Yeah! <laughs>